At Subway, start 2010 right with surprisingly low-fat choices. The Piled High Subway Club or Turkey Melt, fresh toasted under bubbly cheese. Both are part of a Subway Fresh Fit meal, a simple way to enjoy eating better. Subway, eat fresh. The BS Report is a free-flowing conversation that occasionally touches on mature subjects. First of all, this is the BS Report with Bill Simmons. It might be cool, I don't know. And if it's not, I don't care. The BS Report with Bill Simmons. Bill Simmons works for ESPN. He's also named the sports guy, and he writes a comical sports column. He must be a popular dude. The BS Report. It's got a real dirty sound, like a rusty steak knife. Cutting through a well-aged state. Now, now, now. Here's Bill Simmons. Yeah. Welcome to the BS Report Super Bowl week. Who better to come on the podcast than America's worst gambler, Adam Carolla? Yeah, get it on. <laughs> uh, I'm uh, 0 and 7 against the spread, and I keep up what I what I do with cousin Sal's. I go, give me a thousand bucks on Buffalo, and then yeah. I lose. And then I double down, and I double down, and I double down, and I double down, and I lose every single game. So it keeps growing. It keeps, you know, tenfold. On TV, time. when this happens, Brandon Walsh ends up, he's going to have his thumbs broken unless he borrows money from his dad or something. In real life, you just end up winning one of the bets, and you wipe the slate clean. Yeah, but not last year. I lost six in a row, including the Pro Bowl. Ah. I bet on the Pro Bowl. I got some sagely advice from a guy I work with who said, well, just take the dog. I mean, nobody plays. Nobody plays hard. Just, yeah. just just take the dog in the Pro Bowl. And I thought, yeah, why not? Yeah, who can tell the difference? It's a bunch of all-stars on each side, not yeah. really trying. So just take the team that's given away three points. This they, year they you would have won. Well, this year you would have won. Well, sure, strategy. if I would have bet the Pro Bowl this yeah. year. AFC plus three. Yeah, lost uh, last year. Uh, lost the Super Bowl. Lost a couple playoff games. Uh, lost everything. And, and you ruined Jimmy Kimmel's Super Bowl party. Yeah. How'd I do that? Because you were overserved last year. You decided not to have it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, whose fault is that? I was being overserved. That, that's why he didn't want the legal responsibility of potentially you well, falling into the pool or something. Listen, if you don't want me to use the kegerator, don't put it so close <laughs> to the sliding glass door. I've said it a million times. Uh, Colt Saints, do you have an opinion? Yeah. Um, you know, I... I just think Manning is you – know, I'm really starting to understand the the game and that the quarterback really is the general out there. And I know that just sounds like a cliche, but you think about all these guys that have all the tools and the footwork and the arm and everything, and they have the 10-cent head, and they can't get it done. And you realize – what I've been realizing just in the last, like, decade, just this decade with sort of Brady and Manning – And Breeze. And, and, and Breeze, although – to a lesser extent, right. that these guys, the generalship is what's going on out there. These guys have minds like chess players. And because you realize, you see like Peyton Manning, he's not all that mobile. He looks a little clumsy back there. And even, even I, I guess, I, to me, it's when I take a look at Brady and I take a look at Manning, I, arguably the two most prolific quarterbacks of, of this decade, of the last 10 years or eight years at least, you realize what's going on with these two. Like, they're not gifted athletes. They don't have cannon arms. I mean, they have good – they throw they're a good tall. ball. Tall is good. But they're tall, and that's good. But it's really – they go to the line. They see what's happening. They check down. They check off. They call an audible, and they move the chains. And then when they see something, a mismatch that they that they like, then they throw it deep. And, you, and Manning's brain is just so good. Yeah, he's just uh, obviously he was born into this, but I just feel like a they have the Super Bowl experience, and I just feel like Manning's going to win again. I don't want him to win, but I, I bet that. on him, so they're probably not going to win. You could have jinxed him. I, I could have jinxed. I'd like to see New Orleans win for the town of New Orleans. Yeah, but it feels to me it, almost like the Jets game. Like even when you get up seventeen to three or whatever you get on the Colts, they go into the locker rooms, they make a bunch of adjustments and ends up being thirty one to seventeen or whatever whatever that might be. So I just feel I feel like the Colts are gonna be good for like thirty one, thirty four points. And I feel like uh I feel like the Saints are gonna be good for seventeen to twenty one. That's my that's my take. Before the playoffs I had this whole thing about how it's now passing league the team, it's a QB passing. You got to go with the QB in the end. And I went 0 4 in round one. 
Mm -hmm. because it really wasn't the case in round one. It was terrible. But now it's kind of the case. I mean, it's for the elite teams, as you said. Dwight Colt Saints, the two teams that throw it the best, they're in the Super Bowl. Dwight Franey now sort of a wild card thing with his uh, high ankle sprain and whatnot. So uh, I don't know. Obviously, that's going to change the spread. I don't know what it is. Do you think it's funny that people like people like us? Well, you actually played football. I, yeah. I, I probably to- topped out at uh, age nine. But when so, so Franey has torn ankle ligaments. Yeah. People are like, oh, that's all right. He'll he'll play through it. He's fine. That. The average fan has no concept of like how much pain that is to play on torn knee ligaments or torn ankle ligaments well, or whatever. The, the thing that's funny is when the analysts analyze the position where they go, that high ankle sprain for a defensive end coming off the corners, no picnic. Name me a position <laughs> on the field where one wheel bad, one yeah. leg is killing you. Yeah, sure, if he was a free safety or a what? A flanker? Or you name me a position where that high ankle sprain is no problemo. Long snapper. Well, you know, it was funny. I, the one time I did screw up my ankle in football, I was the long snapper. And I, you're screwed when the long snapper goes down. I had to uh, hobble myself back out there and uh, do my do my long snap. But, I mean, uh, I know they have they have stuff that the average person doesn't have. Like they, you have a training staff. Mm-hmm. You have like these... Things that you can be in the hyperbaric chamber or whatever sure. those things are, and it heals faster. And sure. you, have, you have pain medication that could basically kill a horse and all that stuff. But at yeah. the bottom line, it's still pain. Yeah. And it still feels weird to push off a really badly damaged ankle. I know, but you know, you, you remember T.O. did it against your uh, Patriots five, that was five years ago. I mean, he had a bad injury. A bad He had the, a good game. No, then they said there was no chance he was playing and. It was a, he needed like eight weeks to recover from it or whatever, and he came back in, I think, four. I forget what the uh, – Whatever he came back, he had like amazing. six, seven catches and maybe yeah. 90 or 100 yards or something. I mean, he played a really sort of almost heroic game, for uh, especially for T.O. So I expect Freeney will be there. This happens every year. Uh, you know, it's always weird to me when the guy pulls his shoe off and his ankle's not taped. Like you saw Brett Favre get his shoe pulled off, and, and, they, and then they go, oh, we'll tape them up now. Like, don't all those guys just have their ankles taped, like, even for practice? Yeah. It, it's so weird. I would have thought their whole bodies would be taped. Yeah. No cups. And by the way, we should talk about this. Uh, not in too talk graphic about detail. No. Uh, the no th- these guys haven't been wearing cups for years. Yeah. They and which I've known about. It's always it's it's an You mean it, they still don't wear them? No, they still don't wear cups. They, really? They, uh, none of the w- watch well now with the high definition oh, you no. can see that these guys aren't wearing <laughs> cups. Before you could just, a cup makes a shape. Yeah. I mean a cup looks like you put a like, it's like a miracle, half of a miracle bra. It's got yeah. a specific shape to it. Yeah, yeah. It lifts and separates. Yeah, and and these guys picture all picture like Warren Sapp. Yeah. You ever see a cup on him? Yeah, I guess. You, you know, picture all those uh, defensive interior linemen who are wearing no pads in their pants at all. Yeah. Well, I would think when you get older, as things start to sag, yeah, you, that's when you would need a cup. Like I feel like I need a cup all the time, twenty four hours a day. I wouldn't mind wearing one. I uh, listen. Uh, I. I, it couldn't hurt. I think. Yeah. I think would be the point. But uh, my grandfather once, who was from Hungary, so maybe they did things a little weird over there. But he said when guys would go out on like a Saturday night, they would get into fights. Like you know, they would drink and they would fight. Yeah. It wasn't the litigious society we're living in now. Right. Now you either get shot or you get sued or both, but you just don't get into a fight. You don't just get it, just square up and have yeah, a little bare knuckle. Go, the guy would go, go to bars, start putting down some booze and square up, you know? Yeah. And he said guys would wear cups. Oh. Because go out on a Saturday night with like a cup because, you know, by the way, a good shot in the nutsack would kill you back then. Right. They didn't have no microsurgery. They're not going to repair anything. That's, That's true. You bleed to death or internal bleeding. Blood clot and... goes to your brain or something. Do you think the Jersey Shore guys should have worn cups when they went out? Because you're getting into a fight once a weekend on the, on the Jersey Shore. I mean. Listen, what's the worst that could happen? Some chick thinks you got a great package? <laughs> you know true. what I mean? <laughs> what's the worst that could happen? Everyone should just wear cups all the time. It's like... It's really, you know how kids wear helmets for everything now? Yeah. Like, oh, you got a skateboard, you put on a helmet, you got a bicycle, you put on a helmet, you got a scooter, you put on a helmet. Well, we should just do that with cups. Put Why wouldn't on. Jockey make some sort of underwear that also doubled as a cup? Well, you know what it's going to take? It's got to take one, you know, high-profile guy, really, like Tom Cruise, 
is going to have to be in like a celebrity softball game, pitching, and a comeback or just going to have to destroy him. <laughs> and, and, and I mean, literally, an explosion of of testes and you know whatever testicular else. Uh, yeah. shrapnel. Yeah, and then he, you know, he he endorses a line, and he starts talking about maybe maybe we get Jordan and Charlie Sheen to do a commercial <laughs> for it, where he chases him around. It's a little you know, homoerotic, yeah. a little, yeah. <laughs> I'll say, but the point is, is you know. Again, it couldn't hurt. It just, it just couldn't hurt. Tom Cruise, I think was, we, I think he shot too high in the celebrity softball example. Okay, I think maybe uh, you're looking more like Bradley Whitford. Okay, let's say Bradley like Whitford. That. Somebody who hasn't really been anything about five years. Okay, and this then uh, this becomes his his thing in life, right? To okay. promote cup awareness. Yeah. Okay. Cruise, I think would just have them digitally remade somehow and he'd be fine. Yeah. And who knows if he even has them? He might not. And he certainly he, who knows be if playing he's human. any softball games. <laughs> See, who knows if he's a human? Softball game? Yeah. I, I, well, yeah, who knows? I, I called you on Saturday cause 12 rounds was on. Yeah. Cena. John Cena. Did you mm-hmm. end up seeing it or no? No. I, I've never seen it. I gotta watch it. I, I have some movie ideas to pitch. We're it. gonna get to those in a second. All right. John, twelve rounds ends. First of all, the first ever helicopter fight that I'm aware of. Mm-hmm. It's an actual fight, and it's in a helicopter. It's in a helicopter that's hovering over, um, like a hotel that mm-hmm. has a rooftop pool. So you know oh, immediately right, the pool right. is going to become sure. involved somehow. Sure. So seeing it in this guy, I mean, you've been in a helicopter. You can't have, do anything in a helicopter. You can't shift to your right in a helicopter. Well, the thing that's weird about helicopters is they don't have doors a right. lot of the times. And it seems like the one thing you'd really want to put a door on would be a helicopter. True. You know what I mean? Yeah, I so mean, you have a little you know, leeway. Porta potties have doors. It, well, in this porches one, have doors. Why yeah. don't helicopters have more doors? Oh. Uh, every Vietnam movie and everything, there was a guy just hanging out, hanging his feet, dangling his feet off the yeah, thing. Yeah. It's a weird. You know, it's a weird thing not to have doors in. Right. I have a follow-up thought on that in a second. Mm. But So they have this fight that's basically, you know, they have room to really move around and right. duck punches and sure. guys are flying backwards. And then finally, um, the guy's shooting the helicopter trying to shoot Cena. Mm-hmm. And it ends up where they have to get out of the helicopter in like 20 seconds. So he finally nails the guy one last time. And they're hovering over the hotel pool like 50 feet up. Sure. And they kind of look at each other and they make the jump and... Right. They jump in the hotel. Butch and Sundance style. I'm going to say it's the most ridiculous scene in the history of action movies. Really? I really encourage you to watch this just to just to be absolutely uh, flabbergasted by how dumb this is. How about when Schwarzenegger uh, took it, it took his uh, – jumped his horse like uh, into the pool or, or he jumped his motorcycle? It was a great scene. In what movie? Um, Terminator 2? No, no, in, uh, with Jamie Lee Curtis. Uh, Tr- oh, True Lies. True Lies. He, he, he took a horse, he put the horse in the elevator, then the guy went up to the roof on the horse and, like, jumped the horse in the pool, or he got on a motorcycle or something and just, I yeah, he took, he took the horse. Oh, no, the horse stopped and threw him, and he went to the pool, on the roof pool, on the oh. neighbor's bill, on the neighboring. I don't That's remember insane. that one. Well, because oh. you know why? Because True Lies is never on. I think James Cameron yeah. eventually became upset about it and destroyed all copies. When's the last time you saw True Lies on TV? I, I never, but I love that movie. Yeah. Terminator 2 is made to come back. Here's how you know it's True Lies underrated. is a great movie. You go, well, I, like, I kind of like Tom Arnold. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> it's, a, it's a good indicator. You, you know what it is? <laughs> True Lies is for Tom Arnold what Salvador... The James Woods movie yeah. is for Jim Belushi, where you, oh. where you go, you know what? I kind of like that Jim Belushi. And it's the only time you'll say it's that. The only time, time. That's the only time those words have ever been uttered. <laughs> no one has ever went, you know what? I kind of like that Jim Belushi. Was it True Lies a disappointment, or was that Last Action Hero? Last Action Hero was an yeah, abomination, was and True Lies was exciting. That's yeah. a good movie. Blowing never, up the bridge. That was the comeback movie after Last Action Hero. Oh, it was? I thought it was before last act. It was yeah. after. Well, well, either way, when they're blowing up the bridge there in Florida and he's got a hold yeah, of the yeah. ha- Harrier. It's never jet. on. I, I've seen yeah. it once in the it's theater. The and- oh, you know what? You know what? Maybe maybe 9-11 screwed that one up, too. Oh, you're right. Because the terrorists are like dead, dead nuts on, you know? It's, it's, oh, it's, yeah, you're right. Politically, it's not good. But it, they're, they're, they're super it's a too close to home. cartoony, jihadist terrorist guys. Yeah, like I mean, they're they're comically 
literally, because the one guy sort of plays it for laughs. They're like comical. They're like Keystone cop terrorists. Keystone Osamas. Yeah, and now now they have to they have to have like Russians or Cubans or something. Now they can't. It's too on the nose. Right. The uh, Terminator Two, I think now has become really super underrated. Oh yeah, because it, it's it's a movie that came out two decades ago, but feels like it wasn't released that long ago. The yeah. special effects aren't that. You're not watching it going, oh, you know, it's no, the whole, way ahead of its time. Oh, he's taking the Harley and jumping it down into the wash. Oh, yeah. And the, the guy's going in. Oh, I mean, yeah, that's a, that's amazing. Probably the last really realistic looking Schwarzenegger performance before he started doing stuff. Yeah. His face started to get a little tight. And uh, well, you know by true weird? lies, he started to look a little. You know what's weird to me? When, when guys who were formerly sort of blonde decide they don't want to go gray, so they go red. Yeah, that Dr. Pepper kind of color. Yeah, it's yeah. a root beer kind of hair. Yeah, I don't and when like the it. light hits it right, it just has a weird root beer color to it. Do you, do you go in saying, can I have the root beer Dr. Pepper? Like, But aren't you supposed to dye your hair the color it was? I always thought. Not come up with a new weird candy apple red color? Yeah. It, it's always a weird thing to me. You see this with a lot of old dudes. And when they, when they, uh, actors and even business guys, all of a sudden their hair starts turning this weird pomegranate color. Dr. Pepper. And, yeah. And it's like, why is your hair that color? And no, here's what your color, your color, st- your hair starts one color, uh, blonde, brown, whatever. How about this? There's and, three colors your hair can be. And if it's not brown, black, or, or, uh, blonde. Color. Yeah. Or red, I guess there's four. Yeah. So if it's not one of those four, you're out. Yeah, but here, you but can't also create the fifth color. For every human being, your hair is one color when you're 25, and when you're 65, it's it's gray. Yeah. So your hair dye job must be somewhere in between those two colors. It can have a little bit of gray in it. Yeah. It can have a 60% gray. It can have what? But it has to be between those two. You can't just go to another. You know, you can't go to Home Depot and grab another card. From uh, from Glidden and just go, uh, hey, I want this color on my head. Well, why do women, when they, in their 50s and 60s, when they dye their hair, they always go blonde? Always. Nobody yeah. ever says, give me the jet black. Yeah. I, I, what I, is it about that? It's, and it's kind of that Hillary Clinton blonde, short, long in the back haircut that every yeah. woman has now. Yeah. That's like the rule. It's like the uniform for the 55-year-old professional woman. Yeah. My wife wanted to put tan stuff on me last night. Oh, no. Yeah. Well... You know, I'm a, at this. Yeah, you're you're a lot darker upstairs than I am. I got to do a photo shoot today, and she said, "I'm I'm going to put some tan, tan on you." Did you do it? No, we yeah. got into an argument. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> Don't you put that tan stuff on me, woman? I've never even used a bar of soap on my face. I've never done anything. You don't do anything. No. And our skin is nicer than most chicks we know. So what's with all the rubbing and the buffing and the detoxification I will say and that, all that I, stuff? I think uh, the stuff that they have to make women look better, mm-hmm. when you watch movies from the 80s, and here's a good example, Andy McDowell. Mm-hmm. I think I've written about this. Andy McDowell and like Groundhog Day, before mm-hmm. they had all the stuff to make... You know, the teeth whiteners. Yeah. The face thing. Yeah. First of all, nobody has bad, no actress has bad skin, scary skin, whatever. They all look, their face glows, all of them. Right. Their hair always looks great. They know how to do their hair now. Sure. Teeth always looks white. Right. A lot of, lot of advantages for sure. women in 2010 versus like Shannon Doherty in 1990. Yeah. Yeah. The, the teeth no, the bonding teeth, the and things thing, like that. The teeth you did, the teeth technology was not there and the color was not there. No. Yeah. But I think that's why you look at the 80s, you know, the, the famous drought of the 80s for a hot looking woman mm-hmm. where you had like in kindergarten cop the the love interest is Penelope Mill or whatever her name yeah. is. She's like, really? really? Like, yeah. you couldn't have done better. Yeah. Kelly Preston stood out like LeBron James right. in the CBA in, in the a, 80s. In a, in a sea of Kuzak. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, no, but like, now it's, it's like there's just had. a million. Like you, even somebody like... uh I don't know, even like Taylor Swift. I was watching her in the Grammys last time. I'm like, it's a really cute girl. Seems she gets, likeable. She gets nice better looking. looking like every 10 minutes, too. Yeah. She wasn't this hot two years ago. Uh, well, because they have the stuff now. Um, you mentioned doors before. Mm-hmm. My wife asked me this recently. When you're at, like, uh, let's say you're at the Staples Center. Mm-hmm. You go to the bathroom. People can see your legs. Mm-hmm. You're in the train station, same thing. Any public bathroom, you can see your legs. Right. She was like, why don't they just have doors that close? Mm-hmm. 
And my answer was that because then people would go into those bathrooms and have sex in them. Oh, you mean or something horrible? Like, you mean you mean why doesn't the partition go all the way down to the ground? It's so that we can actually. I mean, they well, we want to see doors. Stuff. Or are you saying the partition? I'm yeah, I'm saying the partitions, whatever that you. Why don't they go to the ground? Yeah, why aren't they just like phone booths? Like instead yeah. of being able to see over I've and under them, this. I figured you'd have a theory. Since you're theory. really one of, the, one of the bathroom experts of our time, I've given this some uh, quite a quite a quite a bit of consideration. Okay, good. Are right, you ready? Yeah. Uh, first thing, yeah, we do want to know what people are up to in there, and we want to make sure there's there. not more than two legs. Yeah, and that kind of stuff. Number one. Number two. Think about cleaning. You got to mop that horrible floor mm. like twice a day. And if the, you got something running all the way along the floor, first off, that becomes a dam, a wee wee dam. Oh yeah, you're right. And another, and the other side, it's going to get all corroded and scubbed up. Oh, uh, good point. And you got to be able to take a mop and just slide it just right, under there. right under there. Yeah. So now maybe you could give yourself, you know, if you really think about it, it's just the perfect height just to get the mop and get it under there because that thing's touching the floor. That's a disaster area. Though. Yeah, it's good. Okay, well, what about going to the ceiling then? Unnecessary. Why? Well, it's just you got to think about everything. It's just sort of about cost. Why? Why spend the extra whatever going up to the ceiling? Should we go higher? And, at then, least? and then if you went all the way to the ceiling, you need a separate light in there too. Mm. Whereas now you just get the light that's in the bathroom that'll come in there. What about the fake toilet paper? The toilet paper that's shaped in the toilet seat that never actually works, no oh. matter how you use it. Ask, why haven't we perfected that? The ass gasket. <laughs> Yeah, you know my. Why haven't we perfected that yet? My daughter, like uh, trying to put that on, almost uh, fell into the Staples Center toilet. It, yeah, it's a disaster. Work. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll tell you. Um, well, <laughs> what the, two things? The only p- thing I miss about construction is when you would go to the porta potty in construction. You miss going to the porta potty? No, it's, I'll, I'll tell you that no. But this is the only part I miss. Inside where the uh, where the seat liner thing was, yeah. it's a free cowboy hats. Those are always my – those my, that, that's construction site humor right there. <laughs> Freak out. <boy. laughs> it brought a little bit of sunshine to my dismal day of just yeah. digging dick, ditches. And oh, I got to tell hammer. you something. Uh, yeah. At Sundance, we, uh, we saw this movie with Ben Affleck about corporate downsizing. Mm-hmm. And it ends up – he loses his job. He has trouble finding a job. So he goes to work with his brother-in-law, mm-hmm. played by Kevin Costner, uh-huh. who runs – Who's a, who's a construction? Yeah, he runs his own company. A uh-huh. lot of construction stuff. I, I oh, mean, they're, they're, excited. Well, I look. I don't know this stuff. Sure I don't know what's good or not out. good. But I'm saying for you, yeah, you better be careful. You might even want to bring some sedatives because if they screwed up, there's I'll, see where I'll Affleck's putting up. Oh. Affleck builds a wall at one yeah, point. And sure. Costner's got. They tell you, he brings this tool belt to the uh, first day, and they're like, "What are you doing? Get that tool belt off!" And yeah. he has to make concrete. There's a lot of possibilities here for loopholes yeah. that you might. Yeah. Well, first off, tool belts always called bags. Your bags. Wear your bags. Bring your bags. So. Oh well, they called it a tool belt. Yeah, that's bad. Thing. Yeah, I think you're gonna have some trouble. And with he'll this probably movie. be using like a smooth head headed like. 18 ounce uh, hammer to frame when he should be using a waffle headed 24 ounce Vaughn with a hatchet hand. We might have to have like another that. podcast after you see this movie yeah, right. for you I'm, to complain about all the construction. Speaking of movies, mm. um, you had some movie ideas for us. Oh, I do. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think I'll toss myself in a plug before I do that. Oh, you want to do that? I was saving that for the end. Why don't we no. do one right now, and then we'll do it again at the end? All right. First uh, of all, you can find your podcast on... Uh, you can go to adamcarolla.com. It's easy And on to iTunes. Find. And on iTunes. Uh, we're doing our live shows, and they've been fun. A lot yes. of fun. They're like, uh, I don't know, a little baby little uh, stand-up concert. I would call them a roaring success, since you've sold out. Yeah. And uh, still tickets available, by the way, at uh, beautiful Brea, that is uh, this Brea, Wednesday. Brea, California. Yeah, uh, the third, Brea, California, and uh, Ontario. That would be the following Wednesday on the 10th. So, so it's uh, basically like a combination of stand-up comedy and yeah. uh, your podcast. It's me doing stand-up, uh, me bringing guests on, doing the podcast, but it's going to stand-up. You've With an audience. It. Yeah, and it works. I don't know yeah. why, but it works. So it's fun. You uh, In your first one that you did, you had a... Really, a controversial routine about about your son basically already coming to the grips with the fact that he's gay and he's only he's only two years old. 
Yeah. Uh, well, I won't get too dirty. Yeah, well, it. but, it's but, funny, though. But I have my fingers crossed that he's a certain kind of gay. <laughs> you know what I mean? I got you. Okay. Uh, okay, you want to come movie ideas? I yeah. Got, let me give you a couple. Do you want to talk quickly about your TV show that you're about to shoot? Yeah. No. You can't talk about it? No, I can, but who You got an NBC uh, pilot. Yeah, but who cares? Single camera. Ah. All right. I mean, fine. I, I, I don't know. Do you want to talk about the eight-year anniversary, seven-year anniversary of Bomb Squad? <laughs> <laughs> I got some movies here. Simmons. All right, let's do it. All right, you ready? Yeah. We did Navigating here, right? <laughs> I don't we, know if we did Navigating. <laughs> you want to rip through Navigating? I could pile through Navigating. All right, I'll give you eight minutes. Okay. Because uh, we... You know, we got all the right moves to discuss. Oh, too. wait, you know what? Let's talk all the right moves because we both watched it and we've, we're tired of talking about it just to each other. So now we I'll just, I'll just give you the, I'll just, I'll just, I'll just give you a, a little, uh, just a little piece of finger food for Nav again and then we'll okay, move yeah, it on. Yeah. It's based on that Lexus that can park itself oh. where you don't have to touch the steering wheel. Remember yeah. that commercial? Mm -hmm. And, you know, like, you know, like when it's like the OnStar satellite where you go, I lock myself out of my car and it like unlocks your car doors. Right. Well, imagine the evil satellite oh, 20 no. years from now Navigated. mixed in with the Lexus steers <laughs> itself car and you get in and the doors just lock and you're like, uh, go to work. I don't think so, William. <laughs> and you start and it starts driving all the cars to the Grand Canyon, oh. throwing them into the Grand Canyon. And you can't get out of the car. Except for there's Bruce Willis, who drives a 73 <laughs> Ford Bronco and doesn't go for this crap. I mean, he's the only guy. That's so much better than bestseller. <laughs> <laughs> Navigating. All right. So all the right moves. We both watched. Uh, yeah. Perfectly and beautifully dated. Yeah. 1983. Mm -hmm. Has a nice patina on it. It actually is a movie that. Really could be released now almost, except for like no cell phones and no internet, obviously. But right. for the most part, very basic. Yeah. Young Cruz, believable as the yeah. short cornerback, right? Yeah. Who just, he couldn't get the whole, the, with the word of the coach, it's not what I, I taught you to play the ball or whatever. What, what, what did he teach him? It was never clear what he taught well, him. Well, there, <clears throat> there was, there's a, there's a part in the movie, and I know, I know people aren't, Great with sports, yeah. you know, and the problem is oftentimes the guys who write the movies and especially direct the movies and edit the movies aren't really great sports. And we guys. have we have thought about starting a firm that is a consulting firm for people making sports movies. I like to head up the face mask <laughs> department where I explain uh, you can't do the graphic where it says like. Uh, where it says, you know, Alabama, 1971, and have the guys with the full-on yeah. Jackie Slater, Crazy Cage, and Pop Warner. And the soccer-style field goal kicker. Right, right. It didn't yeah. exist in 1971. Going to have to yeah. have to talk to you yeah. about that. But uh, in, in, this, in this movie, in this, it's confusing because the coach – and and Cruz don't always see eye to eye, but Cruz isn't really a troublemaker, but he's a little bit of a he's a, a rebellious it's a bit of a type. It's a little yeah, bit, yeah. But there's during the practice, Cruz is out on the corner. And by the way, you know Cruz is a horrible cornerback, and you know everybody in all movies, you can always tell when the actor doesn't isn't familiar with the sport, whether it's boxing or whether it's mm. football or baseball or whatever. Because they're trying too hard, yep. especially in practice. Wesley Snipes and can, uh, White Man Can't Jump, great example of that. If you go to a boxing gym yeah. and you see guys just skipping rope, they're talking while they're skipping rope uh, and, like, on a cell phone. Right. Like, they're barely – barely even looks like they're doing anything. And, like, when they're shadow boxing, it barely looks like they're doing anything. Even hitting a heavy bag. Like, it doesn't really look like they're doing anything. But when you watch a movie and the guy's like, huh, 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 you can realize he's an actor <laughs> yeah. doing his version of what a guy who's been – now, if the guy's been doing it since he was seven, yeah. he doesn't – it doesn't – It's he's not burning calories. So Cruz goes out to the corner and strikes up that weird position, almost like – Kids in a karate class, like, hey, you know, like <laughs> clinch fist, like push out in front of him, hand by the hip, you know, like doing that weird thing. And the reality is a good cornerback just floats out there and his hands are dangling by his side. You know, right. he's relaxed. But he does that thing. So it lets you know he doesn't really know what he's doing. Then the guy in practice does a 10 yard just down and out, just right up, does it out. Cruz sort of breaks on the ball. But instead of reaching his arm past the guy and trying to swat the ball or playing the ball, Tackle. he just wraps the guy up. Yeah. He just goes right around his waist, wraps him up, gets there, 
three counts before the ball gets there. It's a horrible play. And the coach starts yelling at him, like, hey, man, you don't you play the ball. You don't tackle. That's pass interference. You can't do that in a game. And Cruz, now this is the confusing part. We're supposed to be rooting for Cruz, but he clearly made a lame play. So what are we doing here? So and Cruz he, kind of has that attitude of, I'm going to do it my way. He tells Craig T. Nelson, like, that's how I play the ball. Yeah, but it's like I'm physical. Your way will get you zero interceptions, yep. some possible receptions, and always a flag. Yeah. So how about you just do it the way the coach is telling yep. you? By the way, there's no coach in the country that wouldn't tell you to put your hand over and swat the ball away, yep. but whatever. So now we go to we flash forward to the big game. Oh, wait, hold on. Yes. It's the same coach who has this big epiphany about, I have an idea how to stop these guys. Mm-hmm. We're going to run a 9-2. We're right. going to stack the line. Stack that's going to stop the running game. And the other coach is like, that's brilliant. Are you sure it's going to work? It's like, yeah, it's, it's called stacking the line. Yeah. <laughs> it's been part of football for a gap years. eight. We did it in <laughs> junior high. So he, so now we, we smash cut to the big game. Of course, the guy does the same play, 10 yards up, st- breaks on the out. Cruz does a carbon copy of what he did before. He doesn't play the ball. He doesn't reach around the guy. He doesn't do the thing where he puts his right hand on the guy's shoulder and with his left hand tries to go around it. And sometimes they'll flag it just because he made a little contact with him. He wraps him up with both arms around the waist and just tackles him before the ball gets there. And then the ref's like, pass interference. And Cruz's like, what? What? Yeah. And by the way, that wasn't acting. I don't think Cruz knows what pass interference is. So he was like, literally like, what? <laughs> he had lived that. And he goes back, he goes back to the hustle, he goes back to the huddle and like, uh, uh, Chris Penn is like, it wasn't pass interference. It's like, everyone yeah. should have been yelling at him. It was a good him. hit, Brian. It yeah. was a good hit. Everyone should have been yelling at him. Like, what the hell's wrong with you, you yeah. idiot? Why did you, why'd you play the ball? So. So he, that's what led to them being on the one yard line, the goal line stand, getting the ball back. Rifleman, uh, screwing then, up the exchange. Yeah, but you know, Rifleman, I think, takes the knee there. The coach should have, should, should have taken the safety. Yeah. So in the locker room, I wrote about this recently, but I'll do it again. In the locker room, devastating loss. You can't lose in a worse way. Pouring rain. They sure. lose to their rival, their rich kid school. Like everyone's there. Sal, Salducci or Salvucci, he's crying. The coach <laughs> walks in and he goes, give it a good cry, Salvucci. You're crying enough. He's like, tell me you need to cry more. Yeah, give it a good cry. You choked. You choked. It's right. like, Mm-mm. you're a good coach. Like, what Should coach take would take it in that? me. So then uh, him and Cruz have the whole, you quit. I didn't quit. You quit. And, yeah. And that all leads to Cruz not being allowed to, to ride back with the team, <laughs> which, know, which that yeah. would be a huge deal in, in 2009. I know. Like, co- kid sues coach for not allowing him on bus, has to find way home. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, there was a whole scene. If you if you got it on Blu-ray and you look at the deleted scene, there's the whole rape scene when Cruz is hitchhiking back to Ampipe or wherever he's yeah, that, from. They cut that it's out. A good thing they cut that <laughs> it's out. Smart to cut that out. But I mean, yeah, there could have been a lawsuit. There. Is that a sports movie in your opinion? There's only one, there's only one football, football game, game yeah. which I I forgot about. And then the other thing I completely based out on when I saw the movie in the theater, by the way, in 1983 yeah. in uh, Westwood, is it, it, there's a happy ending because the coach and Cruz are both going to Pomona yeah. to, to where they have a good engineering, whatever. And that was what I was one of the crappy colleges that I got recruited to play football at. To be a long snapper. When I was his <laughs> age. So Cruz and I would have been – and there's two Pomonas. There's a Cal Poly Pomona – which Roman Gabriel was coaching when I was recruited there, and a Cal Poly San Luis Obispo, and I got recruited for both of them. They're both a horrible program. And you and Stefan Georgievich are the same age. Yeah. yeah he was right. a high school senior in 1983 yeah. or whatever. Well, the movie came out in 83, so it's uh, so safe to assume. So he was born in 1965. It boomed, it filmed in 82, and yeah. we would have ended up at the same po- Pomona or San Luis Obispo playing, playing together, both slow white guys trying to make it. It also has <laughs> one of those great 80s sports movie songs where it's like, Sometimes you gotta push it to the edge. You know, like driving. <laughs> <Yeah. to> the- <laughs> I miss those. They don't have those anymore. I know. The bad, crazy synthesizer. Yeah. The other part I never understood is why his, his buddy, so he knocks up his girlfriend and now can't go to USC. Yeah, Chris it's Penn. Like, I'm having a kid. Oh, by the way. I'm having a kid. They'd have, they'd have a 14 man roster if that precluded everyone. Oh, yeah. From going, playing big, big. I'm pretty sure you can bring them. The girlfriend the and the kid with you. And yeah, they'll find an apartment. It's USC. They pay players. Uh, yeah, yeah. You'll be all right, Brian. You'll be all right. Yeah. yeah. All right. This one's called The Tech. 
the tech? Yeah, the tech. T-E-C-H? Yeah. And this, uh, this stars the guy from The Mentalist, Simon Baker. It's his first big movie role. He is a, uh, he's an ultrasound operator. He's a, he works on the, works on the ladies, puts the goose, he's, that's his, that's his job. His name is Miles Seymour. It kind of works, you know what I mean? Like, I like see for miles, you know what Miles I mean? Seymour. I like yeah. It. He does it. Now, he also has, has somehow this detection. This can, he sees the kid's future. Oh. He sees, it, it, it flashes when, I, I don't know if it's the a- actual machine or it's his mental ability, but you'll see what the kid does. Not only do you see if the kid is healthy and if it's a boy or a girl, but you see 30 years down the so road. It's a little like Ghost Whisperer where Jennifer Love Hewitt sees the past. Yeah. And whenever, this one you see the future. You see the future. Yeah. Through the ultrasound machine. I like and it. And of course, when he sees Demi Moore's kid, who's going to kill the president, What's he, what's he do? So then they had a little Terminator thrown in. Yeah, he's okay. got to, it is the Terminator <laughs> with an ultrasound, with that weird clear goo. So it's Terminator crossed with nine months with Hugh Grant and Julianne Moore. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, he's just sitting there and he's sort of rubbing the babies. And, you know, the, the first ones, he's just seeing college graduations and that, and yeah. it, but every once in a while it's weird. He sees a drunk driving accident, oh, you know, no. and the mother's so excited. Oh, we're so excited for the boy, you know, and he can't do anything about yeah. it. You know, right. it's not what, his job to get kids going to buy it on prom night. He knows. <laughs> You know, he just does it. You can see a little single tear, you know, as, as she walks away so proud, you know, yeah. holding her belly, you know, because he knows in a few short years what, you know, and he sees their life. I think he, you have to add a wrinkle where he's pro-life. Yeah. Yeah. He's pro-life. Yeah. Yeah. So he's got to go. Yeah, he's, yes. He's devout. He's devout born pro-life. Again. Yeah. Born. He's born actually three times. And and so he's, he's that devout. And and yeah, he, he, he does that thing like as soon as the, the probe, you know. Puts the stuff on there. Yeah. As soon as the probe goes, the kid f- flashes, you know, in front of us, you know, riding the tricycle, the going to the prom, you know, first job or law degree or whatever. And then sometimes he sees a car crash and, you know, breaks his heart. But when he sees him shooting at the president, that's when he knows he has to do something. Right. But, what, you know, obviously, he's, he, Demi Moore doesn't know anything. Yeah. And he's and he's pro I think Demi Moore is a little too old for this. Okay. She's 50. All right. Let's get uh, How about Rachel rumor. McAdams? Let's get rumor. <laughs> All right. How about rumor Rachel Willis McAdams? Rachel McAdams. Yeah, I like that one. Rumor McAdams. We'll <laughs> like make Rachel, own star. I don't think rumor can carry this. All I right. Rachel McAdams. Bigger. Yeah. Rachel McAdams. Yeah. And, and, oh, s- single mom. Oh. Single mom. So yeah. he has to buddy up to her. But then he falls in love. Oh, yeah. Oh, he falls in love oh, with her. I hate when that happens. He falls in love, but he's got to get the kid out. Yeah. <laughs> but he wants to save her. And he doesn't know. And she she catches on, but she thinks she, he's just trying to do this because it's someone else's kid. You right. Know? He doesn't understand that the kid's going to kill the president. I like that. So wow. it ends with she has the baby in the hospital, and there's another woman who's giving her baby up for adoption, maybe something like that. Mm -hmm. And he pulls the switcheroo. Yeah. Yeah. But either way, he can't let the kid live because the kid is going to try to take out the president. But you can't kill a baby as the ending. I mean, I think it would have to end up, he would let the kid live, but then maybe 25 years later, Mm. he then kills the guy as an adult because he's pro-life. Yeah. No. You know what happens? You know what happens? What? A birth defect that he didn't know about. He's missing his trigger finger. Oh, <laughs> both, both, both trigger, trigger fingers are gone. That's the, he didn't catch it on the ultrasound. And that's when he, that's the sigh of relief. The yeah. tech. Yeah. The, the only tech. thing I don't like is the title. Okay. Super tech, high tech, the tech, future tech. I think ultra would have to be in there. It would be some play off the word of ultrasound. Either way, Simon, like Simon ultra Baker profound. is Miles Seymour. Simon Baker's a good one. Yeah. Here we go Simon that. Baker was in the Grammys yesterday. You notice with English people, they can put on glasses. Yeah. And they talk in public, and they always seem a little bit drunk. Mm-hmm. You ever notice that phenomenon? Yeah, maybe they need a prescription. You can, you can pick out English people right away. All right. Now, this one you're going to like, because we're taking a turn, because that was macabre. You know, but that, yeah. was, that was gripping. I mean, that was a gripping tale. You, by the way, Nick Cage couldn't have played the uh, the tech. He- I, I want a fresh face in there. I, I want I want a guy. I want to break Simon Baker. I want it. I want his first movie, big movie. Okay. Him, and I like the idea of him 
falling in love with Rachel McAdams, too. Okay. You know what I mean? And right. then wanting to get rid of the kid. Nick Cage, you don't want him to fall mm. in love with anybody. Yeah. This could be a controversial twist. But Rachel McAdams, the dude that knocked her up, is like Puerto Rican. And they think, she thinks, that he wants this kid gone because it's not going to look like him. You know, he's uh. blonde and everything. And there's uh, he's going to be ashamed, but that, uh. that's not it. He's, he's going to try to kill the president. Uh, I will right, we'll come up with a nationality. It doesn't look like Simon Baker. Bank, yeah. Work that out. Could really be any other nationality. Yeah. We talked on Sunday night, and I said, did you hear Nick Cage is bankrupt? Yeah. And you were like, uh, I don't know if I could see a movie tomorrow. What, what time is it playing? You thought it was actually the name of a movie <laughs> well, called Nick Cage way is bankrupt. Bill said it is. He goes, we were talking about seeing movies or movies. And he goes, how about Nick Cage is bankrupt? And I was like, what? what a heist? <laughs> A caper movie? I would see that. When's, is that is that at the arc light? See if, see if there's a matinee. I'll check it out. And then I was like, no, no, no. Nick Cage is bankrupt. Oh, Nick Cage is Nick Cage. bankrupt. He plays Johnny Bankrupt, <laughs> one of the best ex con <laughs> It was like an Abbott and Costello routine. Yeah, it took two minutes before you figured out I was telling you Nick's that on in first. real life, Nick Cage is a bankrupt. I knew but then we were thinking, what an awesome movie. Nick Cage is bankrupt. <laughs> He yeah. needs to get his money back, and he's like in New Orleans. I don't and know he what has to be. rob a bank. He has to rob a bank. It's a caper movie. It's- oh, wait. And in Nick Cage, classic Nick Cage plot fashion, he lost his money, mm-hmm. but for a noble reason. Like he sure. was a Green Beret who had saved all his money, but then it got taken away from him in a lawsuit when he accidentally killed someone in a bar fight or whatever. I knew that he was creatively bankrupt years ago, but right. I didn't know. If, I assumed that the, being bankrupt creatively led to a full checking account. I didn't yes. know. Well, that, I think that was the the irony of the story is that really over the last 15 years and arguably ever, nobody made more money is just or more movies just for money. Right. Nick Cage did. Like he clearly said yeah. after leaving Las Vegas, he's like, all right, guys, I'm going to cash out. Here's my price tag. Mm. You give me a script. You meet the price tag, and I will make the film. Yeah. Michael Caine did it in the 80s and 90s, and then Nick Cage took over about 97. Michael Douglas or Michael Caine? Michael Caine. Michael Caine? Michael Caine's been in a billion movies. Oh, but as like a supporting actor. Hey, but he just took the paycheck right. on, on like 30. I mean, they really should do the ultimate sellout actor and just do uh, like Nick Caine. <laughs> would be the ultimate, I'll do it. Well, actor. De Niro is like that, too. Yeah, but my Mike, De Niro hit a point where he was Michael just, Caine somewhere around, you know, blame it on Rio days, just went, I'll just do any script. Well, that as we found out when he, when he made out with Christopher Reeve in Death Trap, that's, that was when we right. knew Michael Caine was available for so, cash. So I don't know how Nick Cage, I, I, I'm guessing he squandered it on like Elvis memorabilia he bought on eBay. He owns a lot of houses. He supposedly had a bad business manager. He supposedly has like 10 houses. And I, I think like, I, yeah, I think like ten houses and five ex-wives is always a bad, bad deal. But then he was married to uh, Presley for like five minutes, right? Wasn't weren't they married? Yeah. But you that, don't you have know, to pay her off. She's heir to the Elvis estate, right? Like, shouldn't underrated, she be paying Nick? But underrated relationship. Yeah, Nick yeah. Page, huge Elvis fan. Loves him. Acted like him in a movie. Now involved with his daughter. That's right. creepy. So that so Nick, you're saying that you you want to have sex with Elvis? Like yeah, yeah. It's like those things where you can't be attracted to the sister of one of your friends because they kind of look like your friend. Right. You, yeah, you yeah. You must yeah. have a friend yeah. like that, right? Yeah, you had a hot sister. It didn't slow me down, but I know I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. No, there's that thing. Uh, and 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 it also it's they creepy. weren't they weren't long enough. They weren't even together long enough for us to brand them Brangelina or anything like that. You know. Yeah. Uh, you, you know what I'm saying? Press cage, cagely. I would say like Kingly or something. Press King or, or, or uh, Kajelvis? Nick Nick Kajelvis. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean something. There weren't we, we. But the point is, is the possibilities were endless. Well, I wrote in my book, you know, the Brangelina thing, or I think Benifer was the first time they combined the names. Mm-hmm. And what we really should have done is done it with Shaq and Kobe. Oh. We should have called them Shakobi. Oh, yeah. That, I mean, that made sense from 1990, 1997. We should have been calling him that. But I think Benifer was the first one. And now it's like they're kind of forcing it. Like, yeah, they're with pro- Chloe Kardashian and Lamar Odom, I like Clodum. Yeah, yeah. That one, or Clamar or something like that. Oh, but right. It's okay. Sounds like but a kind of sushi. Clomar? Clamar. I have the Clamar roll. No smelt eggs. Let me yeah, ask yeah. you. I, 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 it, it, you know what it's like? It, it, it's kind of effed out, like gate. 
you know, when people oh, yeah, try to put to nanny end. gate, you know, like some some celebrity is accused of like having sex with his nanny. So it's yeah. like, now day five of nanny gate. Like, listen, Watergate is, is 30 years old now. Right. Let it. Give, give it a game. break. Yeah, no one knows what anyone's talking. There's no one under 30 who knows what you're talking about. Well, what about you have a nanny? Yeah. Would your wife ever hire like some – because the nannies that always seem to get the celebs in trouble, it's always like, oh, yeah, she was this uh, 22-year-old nanny from Holland. Right. And she yeah. ended up having sex with whoever. And Yeah. Like, I, I just can tell you that my wife would never let somebody like that in the house. I you know. My my wife did something that uh, I, I don't say that I agree with, but I sort of admire it, which is uh, she had a scale worked into our welcome mat. And uh, as they came in, <laughs> they would literally have a readout over the door. And if you didn't crack 200 bells, she, was, she, was no, she wouldn't open the door when we were interviewing nannies back in the day. Very good idea. Yeah. <laughs> now, <laughs> I felt bad for the ones that were carrying, you know, <laughs> grocery bags and other things that padded their weight. But rules are rules. Yeah. Yeah. So she actually had the front had the front. Uh, <laughs> that would be a good thing for a single guy. The welcome mat scale. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> or even you could have the uh, you could do a toilet seat scale. Like if you yeah. have somebody over their house and they sit in the toilet, yeah. it register to. Would it be a weird conversation? Would you like to use the bathroom? I'm good. Are you sure? <laughs> I'm fine. I'd like you to use the bathroom. <laughs> I said I was fine. Use the damn toilet now. And oh, by the way, lift. Could you lift your feet up? Yeah. Mm. All right. Next one. Uh, this one's called Pinky Cheeks. Okay. And this stars Rob Schneider. We're gonna get this guy back on the horse. Now, now listen to this because you're gonna love this. So Rob Schneider plays an Asian woman. At one of those waxing joints where they, oh. just, they do all the Playboy waxing, right. the Brazilian waxing. Brazilian bikini waxes. Yeah. And they're all, and, and all the Playboy models and the aforementioned Pam Andersons and all the hottest chicks around, you know, <laughs> he's doing the crazy Asian woman. Zoop. You know, I mean, you can, you know, comedy of just pulling and the yeah. chicks screaming and bending over and him staring, you know, staring at him in the ass and all that good stuff. And uh, it's all fine. And he's done it. <clears throat> it's like Tootsie. He's an out of work actor. Oh. Out of work character actor. <laughs> and he gets the greatest gig in the world because these are the most beautiful models on the planet. And and by the way, I I swear to you, there's a place called Pinky Cheeks. And all the Playboy man you know, if you want to see, you know, uh but really anybody naked. You don't see anybody and I don't mean just see him naked. Yeah. I mean I'm right, uh, right. Like, we got you. Yeah. yeah. You you get that you get a job over there. But um, Anna Ferris does – now, she does – she's a manicurist mm. at the same place. Right. Okay. And he falls in love with her. Okay. But she can't – no. He, she thinks he – But he's in drag as an older Asian woman. Yeah, he thinks an yeah. older Asian woman. She's yeah. not, but she thinks he's sweet and they go out and, you know, yeah. she consoles with her about, about it, you know, boyfriends not treating her right and yeah. all that kind of stuff. And then at some point – her grandmother's house is going to be repossessed. She's beautiful, obviously, Anna Ferris, yeah. and she agrees to do Playboy. Oh. She's going to pose for Playboy. They've asked her a time or two. She's been stopped by talent scouts and stuff, but she yeah. has too much dignity for that. But now she needs the fifty thousand dollars yeah. for her. But Rob Schneider's so in love with her, he doesn't want her to give up her dignity that way and pose for Playboy. But of course, she asks him, "Can you do the?" The wax. I need you to do it. I, I want. I want it in the hands of I, the best. I need. I want. I want the best. And of course, he's he's, he's the best. And she's going to shoot the next day for Playboy. So he intentionally screws up the wax job. Oh, you know what I mean. So she's not yeah. fit to be seen. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And he <laughs> pulls on it so hard, and it flies off, hits him in the face. You know, it's like ah, ah pulls off, <laughs> wax him up, sticks to his face, and then when he pulls off, his like prosthetic nose and stuff oh. comes off onto the <laughs> onto the paper. Two. And she realizes what the – and then he spills his guts, you know, and, and she loves it. She finds out they're in love. That's a good one. And also, cheeks. you know, the, the person dressing in drag mm -hmm. to try to win over the – or falling in love for somebody as they're in drag or mm -hmm. trying to win somebody back but they're in drag. Uh-huh. It's why it's like the when the boy and the with the son and the dad switch bodies or whatever. Yeah. It's a gimmick that really every seven, eight years we need. It always it works. works. It always works too when it's like a Sandler movie. When either you're in drag or they think you're gay, 
They they say all of a sudden strange women are like feel my breasts. Yeah, Touch do my these breasts. feel weird to you? I just mash them together. Yeah. So let me get naked in front of you, and yeah. you're like, uh, we're in a law office. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> you're gay. It's like oh, okay. <laughs> I just like to announce I'm gay so women can have me feel feel them up and, yeah. and and get naked in front of me. It's a strange familiarity that ensues. Yeah, the I think it's one of those fake movie things. This next one, I like pinky. Now, pinky one last cheeks. question on pinky cheeks. Do you go the IE or the Y for Pinky? Mm, good good question. Thank you. I had it as a Y, but we can I'm open. Oh. I think I like the IE. Okay. All right. Pinky cheeks. Yeah. Uh next and it's great great lots of cameos from hot 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 model chicks. And again, all the rip. Ah! You yeah. know, all that going on. Hilarity and, ensues every time you get a rip. All right, I got another one for all you. Right. All right. Good morning, San Quentin. All right. Prison DJ. Oh, prison DJ, I like prison it. Prison DJ Legazamo makes comes back huge in this it's, one. John needs Legazamo one. needs one. Is is he's a prisoner? Obviously, he's, he's he's you know he whatever he did, not nothing violent, but he's in there. He got got busted. We the beginning, the first act of the movie is him, you know, someone telling him to take a Samsonite from Mexico, you know, into Texas or something, and it's like unzip and it's filled with heroin. And it's like smash cut that he's in the joint, you know, and he wasn't even and. Now there's a there's a there's a prison radio station, you know, and he becomes got a little Good Morning Vietnam in it. He becomes that guy, but he also starts giving out codes and stuff like where's the warden's going to be. Like you know, when you hear Love and Spoonful song, that means the warden's making his way to C Block. You know, you know what I mean? All the sort of codes and that kind of stuff. Well, it turns out this guy's this guy's hilarious, and and one day, uh, uh, like like a big a big uh. A guy from Clear Channel, you know, or CBS, or one of the big guys. He actually parks his car, breaks down, like outside of the outside of the the uh, the, the prison. He picks up the channel. He thinks this guy's amazing, but he doesn't know it's coming from the prison. He thinks it's a rival station or something. Yeah. yeah. Now all of a sudden he gets a syndication deal worth millions, but it's all coming from inside the prison, and they can't let ever. Tracy Morgan's in this one too. He's like his sidekick. He's like his Baba Booey, you know, and he's making he's he's making all the si- sound effects and everything. Yeah. Now I don't know. I don't know if they're going to escape here. I don't know if uh, if again he just I, we got to figure out the love interest. Maybe Tracy Moore. Maybe they're gay. Nah, nah, I don't nah. think they need to be. Nah, gay. they don't be gay. Yeah, no, they shouldn't be gay. But uh, they uh, so so he's in the prison. He's doing a show. It's wildly pop. It's wildly popular. Gets wildly popular on the outside. But nobody knows the guys on the inside. Yeah. And I'm trying to think where I, I I don't know, should he should should he escape? Well there's an escape, but here the irony would be that he could probably make, you know, ten, twenty million a year on his own. Mm-hmm. If From he just in- waited out his sentence. But maybe Tracy Morgan needs to escape because Yeah. If he doesn't get out within a year, like his son is going to have Hold on. Yeah, someone's got happen. a son. Yeah, He's got to do something for somebody else. Yeah. Legazamo's got a son. Or his wife is going to move to Spain yeah. with their son. I'll never see them again. Or Right. He's got to get out within – there's some sort of impetus for him to have right. to get out. And the way he gets out is he records a whole morning show. So you, so they oh. – and everyone thinks he's on the air. But then there's some sort of catch in the tape at like – and Two and a half hours in, yeah, there's yeah. some sort of loop. It, it, and by the way, Millie Vanilli should have seen this one coming. Every single movie where anyone has ever lip sunk to anything and always at some point starts starts skipping. Well, it, it happened yesterday with Jamie Foxx at the Grammys. Hmm? His, his vocals suddenly disappeared as he was... Oh, really? Yeah, something weird happened and it was obvious he was lip syncing. Really? Yeah. Well, let's put Jamie Foxx in this one. I think too. I like Jamie Foxx as the DJ. Actually, you don't like Leguizamo? I think he's out. I don't. I don't think you're selling a movie with Leguizamo. I think you talk Jamie Morgan? Fox into this. How about we get a cameo <laughs> from Fox as like the 85 year old sort of super old blues black? Guy oh been yeah, in, yeah. Been in his name is Shoeshine or Pops. Pops. Shoeshine. Pops. Pops. <laughs> Pop shoe shine, and he's been in there for as long as anyone anyone knows. You know, just, I like shoe shine. <laughs> that would be a name that you'd get in like the nineteen twenty eight. Yeah, hey shoe shine. Hey. Yeah, and, and so he's in there, and we we age him up with yeah. those weird uh, uh, Morgan Freeman. Dots we just on. tell him you, you shoot for three days, Oscar. Right. 
supporting yeah, yeah. actor. Right. I need basically four scenes from you right. in three days. We'll put some makeup on. And he's always coming in with, you know, because he's taken, he's taken requests and all that kind of stuff. But he, you know, I mean, guys just yelling down the hall and everything, but it's got a lot of like Lady Gaga and Justin Timberlake and that kind of stuff. And he's like, shoe shine's always coming in like, how about some Dizzy Gillespie, man? Yeah. And that cat could really rock, you know, and like, huh? He wants all this stuff played from the 50s, you know, the yeah. 40s, you know, back, back. I like that one. Yeah. I still like Pinky Cheeks the most. All right. Though. Well, that's, the, I mean, that's the comedy. Pinky Cheeks has the, the, it's always great when the disguise gets foiled. Yeah. Like having the wax and he pulls the wax off, but it's on his prosthetic nose. And yeah. I think that's a good Stuck money shot. Yeah. And then there has to be the, there has to be the scene where when, when, when the, uh, when, when the, uh, when the cloth, is is like in the trash can. Here's the scene. Here's the scene. Uh, after the credits roll. Yeah. After the credits roll. They so they they kiss. He kisses Anna Faris. Uh, they fall in love. She realizes she's not going to do this Playboy thing. Somehow Grandma's house gets taken care of, and credits roll. And then we do that little scene after the credits roll. Yeah. And the, that credit is um, the janitor at the at the place. And he's like, you know, he's kind of pushing a mop, and he's listening to his headphones. And he's emptying the trash cans and thing, and that cloth falls out, and there's a bunch of hair stuck to it and a nose. And he just looks at him and goes, what the hell? <laughs> what, what are they pulling off these ladies? And then that's it. That's – that's uh, go to black. So they black show the right cre- credits for five seconds, and then they show that little snippet. Yeah. Well, and the then guy, back to the credits. The guy sees hair in the nose. Yeah, I like, I like the when they do that. Nose. Yeah, and he just shakes his head like that's what, good one. white people are crazy. Well, you did – you raise a great point. Like there really should be a movie set in a bikini wax. This is the most intimate – I'd watch. Well, it's the most intimate – place a woman can go basically and lord knows what happens there and they're yeah. all binded by it and yeah. it does it there's pain there's nudity there's just a lot going on it's this weird culture what, and, and it's not what do they talk about it's not just nudity it's evasive nudity yeah it's or invasive nudity i mean you're you're in you know it, it, you made me think of mrs doubtfire mm-hmm. i think that's the most ludicrous movie that's been made in the last 25 years yeah well, the so kids don't recognize him. He's putting on like four hours of makeup every morning so he can go be the kid's nanny to be closer to the kids. Well, it's always funny when they can do it in just a minute. Like someone knocks on the door. Hold, Hold on. on. <laughs> and they just run and they put on the prosthetics. It's a ridiculous movie. Yeah, it is. It is nuts. It's one of the dumbest movies anybody's ever made ever. Yeah. And... He's like, I just, they just showed it the other day, by the way, on cable. Yeah, it's on a lot. It doesn't hold up, it doesn't no. hold up much. Sally Field should have divorced his ass. Yeah. Because, like, he's throwing a kid's party, and she's like an attorney. Yeah. And they come home, and he's up on the table dancing. Yeah. And, and there's a pony inside the house and everything. And let me just say this. Whose job is it at every, in every movie where there's a party that gets broken up, whether it's a frat party, a kid's birthday party, whether there's a bar and like it's all black and the one white guy comes walking in, whose job is it to grab the record and go zoop? You, you know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah. like because because he's like on the table dancing and they're doing uh, they're doing jump around, yeah, uh, jump by House of Pain or jump up and jump, I did jump, jump, and now all the kids are jumping, everyone's partying, and like Sally Field walk walks in, so and it's like. Zoop. I'm saying everyone's partying. The music's pumping. I've never heard the zip sound in real life. You never heard it in real life, but also, who's manning the thing? Like, oh, who's like, like near the? Who's there to do it? Like, yeah. like in every like, they, you wouldn't know. Well, also, who's the la- who's what's been the last record played at a birthday party? Yeah, but forget about the soup. <laughs> Who stops the sound? Like, like mm. we're in a bar. Like, like when you know it happens like in a bar, like every time where yeah, like a tough guy movie. Yeah, and and. You know, Seagal is talking to one of the locals, and in the back you're hearing, like, Hank Williams Jr. is, like, blaring and stuff. And then all of a sudden, one of the locals goes, you want trouble? You found trouble. And the music goes away. (laughs) Who's sitting there by the jukebox? Is there a guy all night just sitting there by the jukebox? By the way, he can't hear anything. He just said, look, hey, those two dudes stood up. They don't look happy. I'll turn it down real fast. (laughs) Oh, wait a minute. One guy's just going to the bathroom. I'll turn it back up again. Uh, Who's in charge of that music? I think you just, if you're writing an action movie, you have to put that in somehow. At some point, you work it in. I'm just saying, where is the bar or the frat house or the party where somebody's in charge of that thing? And then the other thing is, it's always funny in movies how when they go to a club, especially it's like one of those romantic comedies, it's like a 27 dresses or something, and everyone's dancing and having a good time. And it's, at a certain point, everyone's just rocking out. The music's pumping. 
And then the guy and the girl like kind of come together on the dance floor. And then he, you'll hear him go, so what's your name? And all of a sudden, music, you, you feel the music coming down about 300 <laughs> decibels. And all it of a knocked up like it's that. It's barely playing yeah. in the background. And all of a sudden, they're just talking. Have you ever been on a dance floor? You're going like, what's your name? <laughs> and they're going... It's 9.30! And then yeah. you go, no! And you're just screaming, and your weird beer spittle breath is going oh, into yeah. the person's ear, and you're spitting all you're over. You're just spitting all over yeah. the air. Yeah. 27 Dresses is uh, in my wife's wheelhouse for some reason. She enjoys that movie. I. Uh, that is one of the... Ugh. If you're a woman, you really need to band together and stop Hollywood from making uh, movies. I, like I'll that. tell you the movie uh, movie they played on uh, VH1 the other night. One of the, one of the, the quietly one of the crappiest movies uh, ever ever written. Uh, the sweetest thing. Oh, and, I can't and, watch that one. That uh, that had uh, Christine Applegate in it and, and uh, Cameron Diaz. It's a and terrible movie. It's a horribly written movie. And, the, the, and they're horrible in it. And the script sold for a million dollars. Really? Yeah, it was written by a chick that uh, Sal, cousin Sal, used to work with over at uh, uh, Win Ben Stein's Money. It's a it's a pile of crap. It has a whole bunch of horrible holes in it. It's just a just a horrible horrible chick movie. But I, I was getting angry because it was on uh, VH1, and it was VH1 movies we love, and I thought. What? You don't love this movie. It should be called movies we could clear or movies that were cheap or <laughs> movies that we'd are that Viacom had already purchased and thus we'd had it or something, but not movies we love. Come Nobody on. loves this movie. Clearing out the Viacom library. Right. Coming up at two o'clock. Right. Just call it what it is. Yeah. Movies we love. Here's what a weirdo I am. I was skipping my rope. I was just watching it. It came on the TV and I was like, movie. I said, Nobody loves that movie. I went right over to Rotten Tomatoes. I was like, well, let me see what that score it got it like a twenty 24. So I thought it was rotten. The point is, is nobody loves yeah. that movie. Movies that we hated, maybe it would be better. Movies that are cheap, movies yeah. we own, movies we've we've cleared, not movies you love. One last thing before you go. Mm. What uh, kid shows are your kids watching right now? Uh, they're watching a lot of uh, Wah Wah Wubsy, and uh, they're watching that stupid bear one, the uh, baby bear one. It's, so, it's such a uh, black hole of creativity, and I end up getting aggravated because... It, it's it. Some of these shows are so just creatively bankrupt. You know, it's like. And well, all, my question all is, thing, why are you making when you're making these stupid shows like Papa Bear and Mama Bear and and Baby Bear, the stupid little bear? It's like out of Sweden or Canada or something. It, it's so uncreative that the duck's name is Duck and the owl's name is Owl. <laughs> and I get mad. I start yelling at the TV. At least come up with a stupid name. Hello, like Duck. Ollie the Owl. Hello, Owl. Yeah. Oh, Hello, bear. Hello, tree. Hello, ground. It's like, oh, would you like to help me make a pie today? Ba owl, bear, duck. Hello, cat. It's not even like Mr. Cat. It's it's the most boring crap on the planet. I really like Dora. Ugh. I mean, for that my kids, bitch, like there's I Spanish, <laughs> the no. Spanish words. No, I'll tell you why I don't like Dora. Uh, no, well, hold on a second. I got to beat your kids Dora. learn English and Spanish. Every t every episode they the do nanny. it. First off, I don't like Dora, and I'll tell you why. <laughs> okay, she's she's chunky. You know, she's heavy set. I don't like that. I like a I like a good looking, you know, Josie and the Pussycat. <laughs> Kind of looking animation. Well, maybe you know maybe they're I mean? trying to promote that shape doesn't matter to little Well, kids. it does. I don't want that message <laughs> driven home to any of my kids. Listen, son, I don't want you marrying a chick that's that shape. And, sweetie, if you get to be that shape, you're going to marry a dude that looks like that. And you ain't going to have any money. You know what I'm saying? So, obviously, it's a horrible, unrealistic message to send. But, really, the most offensive part about the whole thing is her sidekick is a monkey. You want to talk about effed out. The sidekick, the monkey, you couldn't do better than that. <laughs> Speed Racer had one in like 1964. Every side, uh, Johnny Quest, every sidekick has a little, uh, every, there've been a million Disney movies. There's been always, every, every sidekick's like, you can't do better than monkey. It's 2010. You can't, hey, uh, let's spitball some ideas. What should the sidekick be for our animated character? I don't know. How about a monkey? Sure. Really, it's done in every single car. So you're down. suggesting maybe a snake, a benevolent snake. Snake, snake's direction. got some baggage. I'm saying like a, you know, how about a panda bear or something like that. Oh, a panda you know, would have been kids nice. Kids enjoy, you know, something that looks cute and cuddly. See, I, but it's the, not, it's I not hate a show more we than have Curious George already. I got another monkey. I hate a show more than Dora. It's called Nihao. Nihao. It's. <laughs> 
Isn't that the, <laughs> I think they said it. But wasn't that that scene from Deer Hunter where they want him to kill? <laughs> They're playing Russian roulette. Ni hao! That was Didi Bao. <laughs> oh. Didi Bao. Uh, all right. Ni hao is basically... Thor was such a smash success that they decided to spin her off like CSI Miami. Well, they got Diego. Well, they they spun up Diego. Basically, Dora was CSI. Diego is CSI New York. And right. Ni Hao is CSI Miami, which is their way of, I guess, like, it's basically a Vietnamese Dora. Oh. So I think their oh, game plan. Oh, I have seen Yeah, you've her. seen that show. Yeah, yeah. So their game plan, I think, at some point was to spin Dora off to every nationality. But I think after the failure of Ni Hao, maybe they're going to stop. But I think they're going to have an African American Dora. They're going to have a Hasidic. They're they're hor- Hasidic Dora. Just guy, just keep going, and then eventually it's twenty four hours a day. The same idea. Dora. It's like you want swiper should stop swiping already. <laughs> no, s- s- swipers taking the Krepla. It, it's horrible, and I. Uh, first off, I like it's, Dora it's, though. Horribly written, horribly Come on. executed. The, the the animation's bad. It looks horrible. There's a hey everyone is everyone sitting? There's a fox who steals things. Please, another completely used up. You don't like grumpy TV. old troll? Grumpy old troll's yeah. not a cliche. <laughs> trolls are never <laughs> grumpy or old. Jovial <laughs> trolls that live on top of the bridge. <laughs> it, it's that whole thing is just one uh, uh, look. It, they've just stolen every idea from every cartoon that's come before them and cr- it crammed it into one crappy shell. What about Max and Ruby? Nah, I'm not not a fan of Max and Ruby either. Uh, here's all I'm saying with the. So you're not a fan of any kids' cartoons. I, I you know what? I can tolerate uh, Curious George because it has a uh, good vibes. They play the music, the good jazz. I like the music in it. Yeah, it does have good it's music. It's not bad. But here's the thing: there's too much diversity in these things. Everyone's has to be like one of everyone represented. You know what I mean? And back in the day, well, they, they do that for a reason, though. I, I don't care. Back in the day. <laughs> They had diversity. You know what diversity was back when we were growing up? We needed a blonde, a redhead, and a brunette. Right. That's that's how it worked. Velma, Velma was diversity yeah. back in the day. Yeah, she, so, she's got glasses. Someone's got to wear glasses. Yeah. And they'll have a hot blonde, hot brunette. You don't hot, make your kids redhead. watch Scooby-Doo? Uh, they've, been, they've been watching a little Scooby-Doo and enjoying a little Scooby-Doo. That one still holds up. Yeah. And I forgot how mad Scrappy-Doo makes me. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm not. I'm not. And, you know, the, the thing that's always funny about Scooby-Doo is uh, once every few episodes, Shaggy falls in love with, like, some hippie chick. Oh, yeah. And, and and the thing is, is the hippie chick will have a hot hippie dog for Scooby to fall in love with, too. Yeah, they like, like to have Max mix and match about back pushing then. the envelope. Not only, is, <laughs> not only has Shaggy found himself a date, but she's got the cute-looking poodle with the, blo- you know, with, with the uh, bow in her hair yeah. for Scooby to, to, you know, cuddle up, cuddle up with. Speaking of dogs, dogs yeah, push in here. Hey. I, is that Rufus? Oh, jeez. Get out. What the uh, f- uh, Sorry about that. That was We started talking about dogs, and my dog basically barged into the room, attacked Adam, <laughs> and <laughs> unplugged the podcast machine. For one hour. Was it Rufus over there? That was Rufus. Yeah, for one hour, Rufus lay dormant. Yeah. While we spoke about sports and <laughs> podcasting and uh, whatnot and fake movie pitches and everything else. And then as soon as I brought up Scooby, and I think your comments about Scrappy-Doo <laughs> may have offended Rufus. Because as soon as you started talking smack about no, Scrappy-Doo. you talking about Shaggy. You talked about how there was always the, the dog for Scooby. And Shaggy was falling in love. Yeah, Shaggy would fall in love and Scooby would fall in love. And as soon as we brought that up. Rufus pushed his head through a couple of doors. <laughs> I mean, a shut door. The doors are shut and latched. He mashed through them, came in here, knocked over the apparatus that we used to record this on, and then jumped on me. <laughs> Almost what? attacked you. What was that? I don't know. Well, let's not talk about dogs anymore. <laughs> let's not. Let's uh, wrap this up. All right. So, CorollaRadio.com. Yeah, you can go to you can just go to AdamCorolla.com, and we're doing uh, live dates all over uh, Southern California. They're fun shows. And, I'm, and coming, you're in Brea coming, coming up, up on Brea Wednesday. this uh, on the third, and then uh, Ontario after that. But just go to AdamCorolla.com. Check the dates. And that's all we got. Talk to you soon. Love you, buddy. So I get the sound off. Whoa. Thank you for downloading the BS Report with Bill Simmons. Too much fun. Check out more podcasts at the iTunes Music Store or at PodCenter at ESPNRadio.com. Peace out. 
You laughed, you cried, you turned up the sound repeatedly, and now it's all over. This concludes another installment of the BS Report. And with all the talk about sports, Bill Simmons neglected to mention this important just-breaking news. <clears throat> Subway is home to the famous $5 footlong. So celebrate your favorite Subway famous $5 footlong, like the classic BLT or the Big Bowl Black Forest Ham and Cheese. All stacked your way with the meats, cheeses, and fresh, crisp veggies you love. 